introduce yourself and tell us where you're from. First and last name. Okay, my name is Gunnar Fairbairn. I'm from Portland, Oregon. Um, and now I work at Pesto Tech. <laughs> Hey, nice, nice, nice. So, my Portland, Oregon. So now, like, it's Portland, Oregon. I don't know much about it. Uh, never been. So, like, break it down for me. Like, you from a certain side of town? Are you from like, like, give me a, give me a snapshot, man. Um, so I grew up outside of the city in what is called Beaverton, and I went to a couple of public schools there. Um, I also went to a couple of private schools. I went to six different schools growing up. Yeah, just trying to get a good education. Uh somehow. <laughs> and um, yeah, we have a couple companies down here in Portland. It's really progressive city. It's home to Nike. Um, there's Intel's here. Microsoft, I think, is here as well. But really, we're like a small city in the metro area. Maybe people, half a million people live. But like, that's, yeah, that's like a 40 minute drive in and out of the city. Yeah, so man, these are six different schools. That's crazy. So like six different schools, like between elementary school and like junior, like like, elementary. yeah. So yeah, my my parents uh, lost their jobs when uh, in two thousand eight, and so I had been in private school, and they moved me to public school. Gotcha. Um, and I was also kind of like ADHD, and so that's kind of why I was in public uh, private school in the beginning. And then when they got their jobs back, I got into a private high school, but it wasn't a really good fit, and so I switched. And I spent the next three years at a pretty good place that was like college prep. But yeah, yeah I, I didn't know where I was going, yeah. <laughs> at least until my high school years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you get in high school, right? You graduate high school? Yeah, I graduated high school. Okay, yeah. cool. And then like, then like, you know, like, you know, people ask you like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Gunner? Like what, what's, uh, like, what was the thing? Like, what'd you gra graduate, went to graduate high school, went to college or like, give me the, yeah. I mean, having been to six different schools, I felt like education was such a huge, big uh, issue for me in my life. And it was had a big impact on my life. Um, and I'd also done some volunteering and was a camp counselor. So when I got to college, I was worried about, you know, figuring out my future, but I was also worried about others. And I started studying education at the same time as economics sure. and focusing a lot on human capital and well, if I went to this school and I, it was a private school and it cost this much, like, how is it going to affect my future? How does it affect most kids' futures? Um, and eventually I settled on that, yeah, like being a teacher would be like the most impactful thing for, for me, um, kind of like break the cycle. Uh, but I, I really couldn't be a teacher right away when I graduated and the, the salaries were not really in line with like, a, a living wage <laughs> so and that was my econ brain speaking um so I when I graduated I basically uh had myself deep into the job search job hunt figuring out what to do I had no idea what I wanted to do man no um, idea no yeah. idea so then so then like you jumped around and so how did you find rework like so then like what what's this I was always inspired by tech I thought that the creativity and like the innovation in tech was just amazing and the growth. Um, I, I loved f uh, hearing about how tech companies were, you know, IPOing and being worth all these billions of dollars and stuff like that. And they were coming up with these insane technologies, fixing social issues. And I was like, okay, well, how do I get a job in a tech company? How do I get a job in a startup? And I kept on coming across salespeople um, and recruiters and they were all like, yeah, we're just looking for people in tech sales. Like that's all we're looking for. We, you could be a project manager you could do this, you could do that, but no, no, we're, we're looking for salespeople. And, um, I was like, okay, so I got to get into tech sales and I went to three programs in total before I actually got a job and rework was the one that was the last one. <laughs> so it's the one that got me the job. I went to one that was online for Europe because originally I wanted to work in Europe and it was called Grad Guide. And I also went to one called Vendition, which was basically just a recruiting hustle uh, where you watch some e-classes and you then take a call and you try to sell yourself to the recruiter at their org and then she places you in a company. Um, and at that point, I didn't know what 
really the job was. So I wasn't really prepared to just go. Um, she was just saying like, yeah, like you have the ambition, so you're qualified for the job. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> and I was like, yeah, but I don't think that's enough. So before I joined Rework, I actually joined a startup um, and I left the US completely for wow. five months. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out my shit. <laughs> So then you boom, you get back, you join rework, you're after like, man, leaving the US, going to some other boot camps. And then so let's talk about your experience with rework, right? So like what was the biggest takeaway, you know, best thing that happened, worst thing that happened? Like, let's talk about rework. The best thing that happened in rework was that like I kind of got some validation that like I was going in the right direction and that like I deserve to be there. Uh the I got connected with a lot of different people that uh, showed me that the side of sales that was relationship-based selling, which um, wasn't, you know, based on like trying to win over someone or sell them something they don't want was like not, not a thing anymore. So like aggressive sales was not all of sale. And I got some really good feedback where it was like, Gunnar, you're going at this really hard and I appreciate that, but you have this ego. And I was like, no, I don't, no, I don't. And I, I, I had to hear it a couple different times. And it was because growing up, I was kind of told that companies take things from you. They don't give you things. They take your job away. They take, you know, you out of school. They, um, you know, they don't secure your future um, and they don't care about you. And it was, you know, it was hard for me to really think I was going to get paid, you know, at the end of the day, or I was really going to get the job or that I really belonged there um, at the company. So, you know, that ego was kind of based on fear, fear that like, you know, I would be, I wasn't going to get the job and that it wasn't actually going to, I wasn't going to, you know, be able to support myself, you know, and that like good jobs didn't exist. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And I so can imagine like, have a living wage. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Cause, cause you're getting the pushback and you get hit from different directions. Wow. Okay. And so yeah. like, man, so you went through this transitional phase. It sounds like a, like, all right, man, you, you, you came down and then boom. So then how many, uh, you know, you took, you took the feedback and then you had a job. Yeah. I mean, I was in rework training while I was abroad. So I was going to classes from midnight till 3 a.m. some nights. Or sorry, it was like 11 to 3 a.m. And then I was also meeting with recruiters doing like in the first interviews while I was there uh, from like 8 to 9 p.m., you know? So yeah, I was, I was going seven days a week and then I came home and the third or fourth week I was home in the US, I had matched up with another recruiter outside of rework and she said, you would be perfect for this one company. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I was, I was like, okay, like I am, I was in seven different interviews for seven different companies at that point. And I was like, okay, but that company said to me in the first call, like, you know, we want to get this done in a week. We want to hire you in the week. That's and I was just like, okay. <laughs> and so I took two more interviews and they were very conversational. And then I signed an offer letter and I actually asked the recruiter to help me sign because I had never gotten to that stage before. And I didn't know how to decline the interviews I had coming up on my calendar and also how to make sure that you know, everything was in that offer letter was, you know, included, including like equity and, you know, just that everything was happening for real. <laughs> yeah, it's just happening for real. You had to pinch yourself. Man. Yeah, I had to pinch myself. Yeah, I needed a lot of support at that moment. Yeah. Yeah, man. So now if you could like, you know, if you think back, like you could talk to a younger version of Gunner, like let's get Gunner out much faster. Right, mm -hmm. like because the, there is a younger version of Gunner out there that's just like, you know, 
cocky, just mm-hmm. like in its own way. Like, what would you mm-hmm. tell that younger version of, of, of Gunner? I guess I tell the younger version of Gunner that um, although you've like graduated from school, you've done absolutely nothing in terms of networking. Um, and there is a lot to come from that. Um, and there's a lot of feedback you need to have on selling yourself to other people. Um, you need to like see how other people see you um, in a really you know, visceral sense. Um, you need to like record yourself interviewing. You need to do some mock interviews with people that don't know you and don't already like you. And, and you also need to trust the process. <laughs> yeah. Trust the process. Love it, man. Yeah. All right, cool. So now, you know, this is the last question. So we have this, uh, you know, we use this mantra, rework, get this work, right? We say it often, you see it. I love that. All yeah. right, get this work. <laughs> what, is, what does get this work mean to you? For me, uh, get this work means like actually put yourself out there and, and, and do the work that it takes to get a job. I work in sales, and so I'm going to probably have to use a sales metaphor here. There's a couple touches that go towards, you know, getting a job, you know, that's reaching out to people on LinkedIn. There's networking. There's, um, you know, figuring out whether they're still hiring, finding uh, someone who works there and kind of uh, having a soft touch at like a little informational interview. Like there's so much work that goes into just landing the interview. and then like also like listening in that interview to what they're looking for and kind of qualifying the lead (laughs) and it's very fine to say no on the first interview and be like this company's not a good fit for me i asked my questions and this is not going to be a good deal because there's going to be um if you do have other interviews on your plate there's going to be better fit out there. And so you have to figure out it. You have to look at it as a sales funnel and be like, you know, if I spend so much time with this company doing three or four interviews, um, I might not put that much time into these other deals that are of a higher value. Yeah. <laughs> and good stuff. So now we end the interview, every podcast we end with. Uh, so now you have to tell yourself, have to use them like, gonna, like, I, like I would end like Shelton get this work, right? So now you got to end it with say your name and get, tell yourself to get this work. My name and then get, get this, this work. work. Right? So you tell, tell, you're telling yourself that. Well, it's like, it's your hype speech to yourself. So like the last part, you told your younger self something. And now it's just like, after you told your younger self, you got to say like, gonna get this work. Like, like you got to say it to yourself. Gunner, get over yourself and get this work. <laughs> Dope.